All right, so let's get to what all, what all of you are talking about. Amber Heard is back on the stand today in the defamation lawsuit filed by her ex, Johnny Depp. So here's a video of Amber from yesterday. On the first day of her testimony, she talked about falling in love with Johnny as well as some of the alleged domestic abuse. Now, warning to our viewers, some of Amber's testimony is disturbing. Take a look. That was the love of my life. And he was. He was, but he was also this other thing. And that other thing was awful. He's like grabbing my, my, my breasts, he's touching my thighs, um, he rips my underwear off, proceeds to do a cavity search. He said he was looking for his drugs, his cocaine, his coke. Wow, um, that was just a little snippet. There's a whole lot that's been happening in the courtroom. So to help us make sense of it all, please welcome our favorite body language expert, who, by the way, spent 18 years as an investigator with federal law enforcement. She's also CEO of the Body Language Institute, Janine Driver. Janine, hey, Janine. thank you. Hi, I'm happy to be here. I, I train clandestine spies too, but don't tell anybody. Whoa, well, now everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Janine, I love getting your insight on this trial. And to give you some more credibility, you actually trained the FBI and the CIA on all of this stuff. So after watching Amber's testimony yesterday, you've been in the courtroom and you're following this very closely. In your opinion, what did her body language reveal? In my expert opinion, what I'm seeing with her body language and with her wor words that we'll get to in a bit too, uh, there's a lot of deception happening here. And one of the hardest ways to spot liars is when they bet, you know, embed parts of the story that are truthful. And that's what's happening, in my opinion, that's what's happening here with Amber on the stand. Yeah, it's I wasn't like, buying those tears. It, just, that's just it looks strange and like, you know, obviously we're looking here at her body language, but also people were talking about what she's saying. They're saying that Amber changed tenses a lot during her testimony. What, what does this mean? So you may remember Susan Smith, she drowned her two young sons in the early 90s. She was dating a guy who didn't want to date a woman with children anymore. More. Susan Smith had these fake crocodile tears that we see yeah. with Amber on the stand. No tears, right? We have a near nose and throat doctor for a reason. They're all connected. When someone cries, you see a deep swallow and tears. See that? And what Susan Smith said is, I loved my boys. They were still searching for her boys. Oh. She used the wrong tense. We look for the wrong tense. What's happening here is Amber is saying, he slapped me, he slapped me, slap. So past tense to past tense to current tense, and this is ebbing and throwing through all of her stories. And as a matter of fact, she didn't even say he hit me. She left out that pronoun, so yeah. that wasn't even in there. I actually want our viewers to see that since you brought it up. We have mm. some footage of that. It was that simple. Um, I, I just laughed because I thought he was joking and slapped me across the face. Yeah, there yeah. it is. Slap me across the face, not slap. Right. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Wow. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm like just it's blown so away by this entire thing. Yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I'm like, why do people just destroy each other like this? But let's get to, I mean, your expert, your expertise, because this is fascinating. Were there other parts of Amber's testimony that raised red flags for you? Like she started and stopped sentences a lot. Right, so start, stop sentences. We like to say in law enforcement, it's like a scar that you have on your body. The reason you have a scar is a piece of your your skin is now missing and you're threading the two pieces together on either end. When someone has start, stop sentences, the reason we pick up on it as not being someone who's telling the truth is because a scar is created. She has removed something from the story here. So she does have started sentences several times. I myself am a survivor of, of domestic violence. If I were to tell you my story, there are no stops, start stops. It goes all the way through. So this is, she's leaving out parts of her story. And she does this interesting sound effect, cut tutting. I think you may have pulled a clip for it. Yeah, we have it. Um, so she was upset. So, okay, let me just play devil's advocate for a second. Is that possibly something that can happen due to trauma as well? Like the start, stop, the, the different things that you're referring to right now? Well, first of all, Sam did it at the beginning of the segment. So Sam, when you were introducing this segment and talked about that there's some graphic information we're about to hear, you tut-tutted introducing this segment. We all tut-tut. Our grandmother used to do it when you'd sit at the table with her baseball hat on at Thanksgiving. 
Take that off, young lady. So we are tut-tutting throughout the day. You're looking for where it's out of place. Sam, it makes sense. She's tut-tutting because this is, I'm in trouble. This is, you know, I'm disliking what I'm experiencing here. It's annoyance and impatience. And it's like, I can't stand this. Where we're hearing these tut-tuts through all Amber's testimony, it's out of place mm. for someone that's just telling the truth. It makes sense with Sam. Or if I say, what do you guys want for lunch today? You might go, I don't know what I want for lunch. Right. Interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. Okay, so now that we have all seen, you especially, both Johnny and Amber's testimonies, in your opinion, who is being truthful and who do you think was the aggressor? In my expert opinion, training over law enforcement people just last year alone is that the aggressor is Amber and if I could go back in time if I was Amber's attorney I would have asked Johnny Depp when he said he doesn't strike women or he's never struck a woman how to define that what does strike mean our words have meaning maybe he hit her in self-defense while she was hitting him but in my opinion she is the abuser and what's, you know, at the end of the day, even if she is, you know, uh, Dan Abrams said this earlier, no matter what happens, if one juror, one juror believes that she was abused just once, even if it was in quote unquote self-defense and they say that, then she will win this case. Right. So, wow. Uh, Janine, thank you so much for your expert analysis. For everyone at home, you can learn more about what's going on in this trial and what body language really means by, by checking out Janine's TikTok at Body Language Institute. We appreciate you, Janine, as always. Thank you. Thanks, Janine. Thank you.